Hello, my name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this tutorial, using bit depth and low light features, we will cover the steps necessary to use the bit depth and low light features of a Phantom Camera. The bit depth feature makes it possible to increase contrast and see images with less light simply by selecting a region of the total dynamic range of the image to display on the screen. A variety of Phantom cameras have sensors that have the ability to record and save 8, 10, 12, or 14 bit values, or image grayscale levels, for each of the active pixels that are transferred to the control computer as either 8, 10, 12 or 14 bit words. The first step in using the active pixel bit depth feature associated with your phantom camera is to select a camera from the available cameras list in the manager control panel. For this tutorial I'm going to use the Mero 320S Cam2 camera by selecting it from the cameras group in the manager tab. The next step is to define the recording parameters under the Cine settings selector in the live tab. Notice that the camera is presently set to a resolution of 768 by 480 recording 5000 frames per second and the exposure has been set based on the lighting conditions I have here. However, for this take I want to record at 25000 frames per second. Based on this resolution, the maximum rate I can shoot is 7300 frames per second. Therefore, I need to reduce the resolution to achieve the sample rate I need. To achieve the 25,000 frames per second I need, I'll need to reduce the resolution to 320 by 240. I'll type 25,000 into the sample rate data entry field and hit the enter key. Notice as soon as I change the sample rate that there is not enough light to expose the images properly. The reason it did this is because the exposure setting was greatly reduced and set itself to a valid exposure time to capture at this rate. I'm going to select the maximum exposure time from the pull down selection list. This is where using the bit depth feature of the camera will help us. Since the number of images I can record and the amount it takes to record them changed when I adjusted the resolution and sample rate parameters respectively, I'll need to readjust the trigger position so that I can record half the buffer as pre-trigger frames and the other half as post-trigger frames. Before I set the bit depth feature, I want to focus in on the subject matter without having to change any of my city settings. To do this, I'll click on the low light button, then adjust the auto exposure feature compensation slider for PH16 camera models, or enter a grayscale level in PH7 cameras to properly expose and focus the camera if necessary. When the low light button is selected, it automatically enables the auto exposure feature. For details on using the auto exposure feature, review the auto exposure and PCC tutorial. Before I move on, I want to point out that PCC has temporarily reduced the sample rate and increased the exposure time. However, if I change either of these settings, even with the low light feature enabled, the settings will be set to the change value even after I undo the low light feature. Now that I have focused in on the subject, I'll turn off the low light feature by clicking the undo low light button. Notice the sample rate returns to 25,000 pictures per second and the exposure time back to 37 microseconds. Since the lighting conditions are not ideal to record at 25,000 frames per second, I need to enable the active pixel image bit depth by opening the camera setting selector. Then click the bit depth pull down selection list arrow to select the desired bit depth from the list. Some cameras will allow you to choose 8, 10, 12, or 14 bits from the list. Other cameras will have fixed values like this one. The choices listed are camera dependent. As you can see, Phantom Mero 320S camera models only support 12 bits. Even though the sensor of the camera is capturing data across the sensor's full range of 16 bits, the camera only outputs to the control computer the image data gathered from the best 8-bit range of the sensor. Image data 
that is captured in the four least significant bits and the four most significant bits of the sensor are typically not displayed because of their high signal to noise ratio which produces less than perfect quality images. However, there is image data being recorded in those bit areas that the bit depth feature allows us to pull out and focus in on as you will see shortly. The next step I want to do is ensure that the camera is providing me with the best images possible by performing a CSR or current session reference. One other important note you should be aware of. When I change the bit depth, the image range and trigger position is going to move, so I will need to reset it to the desired position. With the camera set to capture the event, let me demonstrate the power of this feature by opening the Image Tools dialog window first. Notice, the majority of the image data is being captured by the sensor's pixels associated in the lower ordered bits or the dark region of the sensor. What I want to do is pull out the image data they're capturing by increasing the gain of the dark area. By adjusting the sensitivity slider. This sensitivity slider will be displayed only when the bit depth is set to a value greater than 8 bits. By moving the slider to the right, notice how the pixels start to spread across the histogram and the image data captured in the dark area is starting to become visible. You can't help but notice that these images are not the quality images that you have become accustomed to from your phantom camera. As I mentioned earlier, this is because the image data we have instructed the software to focus in on is being captured by those low and high order bits of the sensor which have a high signal to noise ratio. As an engineer, I'm more concerned with being able to extract the data out of the images than how pretty the images look. I can now use the image tools to try to clean up the images a little more. As you can see, simply by performing some minor adjustments in the image tools, I've been able to produce a fairly good image that I could easily perform measurements on. If this were a monochrome camera, I could record at much faster sample rates under the same lighting conditions, since the monochrome camera sensors are much more sensitive to light. Bit depth adjustments can be performed prior to cine capture or post cine capture, whichever works best in your test environment. At this point, I could if I wanted to, capture, review, edit and save the cine, just as we did in the capturing your first cine, reviewing your first cine, and editing and saving your first cine tutorials. For this tutorial, I'm not going to record a cine. Before we finish this tutorial, I want to reset the image tool settings back to their default values. That's how simple it is to use the bit depth feature associated with your phantom camera. So that concludes the using bit depth and low light features tutorial, where you learned where and how the bit depth and low light features may be able to help you in your low light testing environment. For in-depth phantom operations, Vision Research offers phantom operations certification training. Please visit our training webpage at www phantomhighspeed.com service support training or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the contact us pull down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for phantom cameras in general.